done grading the house pad and now I'm ready to start digging the footings. First thing I needed to do was put up uh, batter boards at each of the four corners to lay out the footprint of the house. Batter boards are basically just two concrete stakes that are hammered into the ground with a two by four spanning between the two that's set to a specific elevation. In this case, the batter boards are gonna be set to the elevation of my stem wall. I made sure to put the batter boards far enough away from the corner of the actual house so that they wouldn't be in the way when I dug the footings. I put the 2x4s on the back side of the steel stakes so that over time the tension of the string wouldn't pull the nail out of the 2x4 because I don't want the string line to sag in the middle. The total span of the house is 84 feet lengthwise so no matter how tight I get the string it's still going to sag some in the middle. Once the box was set up with the string I used that to paint out the house. I did all this before I rented the excavator because I wanted to make sure that everything was ready when the excavator got here. I painted it all out on Thursday and I rented the excavator on a Friday and used it for Friday and Saturday. The mini excavator I used, I rented from a friend of mine who owned one. He rented it to me for $500 for both days, including fuel. Uh, so 250 bucks a day. Well, it seemed like a pretty good deal to me. It came with a 12 inch bucket that I used for digging the footing. And it came with a 24 inch bucket that I could use for just mucking out some heavier spots if I needed to. It also had a quick disconnect too, so I could easily change the buckets without having to even get off the machine. Once I got the excavator here, I uh, rechecked the box, I laid out all the paint again. It's important when you're squaring up a foundation to use a steel tape measure. Steel tape measures don't stretch over time, nylon ones will. When you're measuring 80 something feet, you need it to be exact. I only had a nylon tape measure when we initially laid out the foundation. So later, once I got a steel tape measure, I checked it again. I had to make some minor adjustments. There are a few mathematical formulas that anybody building a house or working in a construction trade should probably know. You need to know how to measure the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. You need to know what the length is from one corner of the house to the opposite corner. So this formula is called the Pythagorean Theorem. It's pretty simple, really, if you think about it. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I started in the furthest corner of the house pad. I didn't want to paint myself into a corner. I wanted to work my way out and avoid having to track over any footings that I'd already dug. Uh, while I was digging the footings, it generated a lot of dirt that needed to be displaced. Spoil piles. I started spoiling into the back patio area. It's a raised patio too that's a concrete slab. And before I can pour that concrete slab, I have to fill that up with dirt and compact it anyway. So I was thinking I'll just put it there. That ended up being a mistake. Should have put it in the backyard. When I dug the footing for the house, I ended up having to move some of that dirt twice. The first uh, section of footing that I dug had two by two pier blocks, like every nine feet or so. So it made it a little trickier to dig that one because it wasn't just a straight line. Uh, every nine feet or so, I had to notch it out and make it a little wider. Instead of being a foot wide, it was two feet wide, so I had to add six inches to each side. The purpose of those two by two piers uh, is to support the roof line. Probably the toughest part of digging these footings was digging the front footing of the house. Because it was right on the hinge point of the slope. So the hinge point is where the house pad starts to go down. I had to be right up against it. And these things are dangerous. They'll tip easy if you're not careful. Couldn't really set up where I could just track back. So I had to, each set, kind of nose myself in there sideways using the bucket to support myself so that I wouldn't fall down the slope. And then once I got where I needed to be, I used the front dozer blade in order to stabilize myself. It worked out fine, it's just more movement. Same stretch of footing took probably twice as long. Another nice thing about this particular mini excavator, and I think probably all mini excavators, I'm not sure, is that the boom and the stick could also articulate. That allowed me to dig in a little tighter corner. Once everything was dug, I loaded it back up on, my, on the trailer and took it back and I made sure to come out every day and water the footings. I put just enough water in there to keep moisture in the footing but not make mud. I wanted to make sure that the footings had a good amount of moisture in them. That cement starts curing, it's gonna start sucking moisture out of everything you can. So 
So I want to make sure that there was plenty of moisture already in the footings before we poured the concrete. Basically every day leading up to the pour. I also rechecked all my batter boards. I did hit one of them with the mini excavator. I had to reset that one up altogether. And then I set up string lines for the top of the stem walls all the way around. The front of the house actually has a pony wall, so it steps down. I added a second 2x4 to the batter boards in the front of the house, stepped down the string line to the top of that stem wall, and then it stepped down again at the garage. There's three different elevations for this house. The bedrooms, dining room, kitchen, and bathrooms are all one elevation. Living room steps down a couple feet, I think a foot and a half. It's gonna be two or three feet stepping down into the garage from the kitchen. All right, thanks for watching. If you like this channel, make sure to subscribe, uh, hit that like button, and tell your friends about it.